Stop telling kids that they are trans because they have behaviors or like items that are typically associated with the opposite sex. This used to be what the left promoted. Why is it so hard for them to see now that this could lead kids down a path to irreversible damages? Welcome back to the channel today, everyone. So if you follow me across other social media platforms, you probably know I had an article published this week in Human Events on gender transition and the sunk cost fallacy. And I wanna talk about that a little bit more. But before I get into that, a word from our sponsor, the AP for Liberty shop. Get all your Liberty gear at my friend Austin Peterson's shop, like this George Washington Buddha, and make sure to use the link in the description to also support your girl. Also, exciting news that came out this week, I am now part of the Outspoken Ambassador team, so make sure to go check out Outspoken. It's a getoutspoken.com, link in the description. So now onto the article. I wrote this after hearing some detransitioners explain their story, um, how there was a point where they subconsciously knew that this was the wrong path for them, but they felt pressure to keep going further, whether that was directly from people or subconsciously or internally. I'm also not the first person to make the connection between detrans people and the sunk cost fallacy. In fact, Shapeshifter, who I mentioned in the article, used the term in his interview on the Blair White Project. Honestly, like, I didn't miss it up until it started. Like, I mean, I missed it, but I couldn't admit it to myself. It was like a sunk cost fallacy, you know, and I, when I posted that video about complications, I really wanted to kind of warn other trans people who want to get surgeries. I always wanted to lift cells sure, and I, I was convinced it will help me in a lot of ways, you know? And it's like, but I was, now looking back, I was just a guinea pig with a Stockholm syndrome and I was defending because I was also like one of the activists. I saw like, because yeah, oftentimes I attributed my sadness to not passing as much, maybe not passing like 100% of the time and like, <laughs> but, um, I started missing my penis when I, um, you know, started taking testosterone uh, a few months ago. I so. recommend going to watch or listen to that interview. It was very powerful and very important information that they were talking about. As well as I mentioned Scott Nugent from What is a Woman documentary. Um, I was on a podcast when he said this. I could say, you know what, medically transitioning has for me helped a couple of things. I would not do it again. It's not life-saving. There are too many negatives for the positives, but there are some positives to it. I'm not going to detrans because that's a fucking joke. I mean, what am I going to do? Be at the grocery store for the rest of my life going, it's ma'am. So, you know, um, I've accepted what, what I've done. And that is very much an admittance that he is too deep to even turn back now. Um, so I want to give you the Oxford definition of a sunk cost fallacy, which is... The phenomenon whereby a person is reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they have invested heavily in it, even when it is clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. The example of a stock trader who invests into a bad stock but holds onto the stock because they have already lost so much when it would be better for them to cut their losses and move on to other stocks is a perfect example, except here we are talking about kids and not calculated adults. I mean, think of what happens mentally when a person comes out. The moment they decide to tell people that they are trans, they can't put that back into the bottle. The moment you start using new names and pronouns, the inability to turn back grows. Then at the point of taking medication, the changes become impossible to even completely reverse. So your investment grows even more. And so as you go down into this investment, you've already, you know, taken the time, you've already told people you're trans, you've already forced people to change how, how they refer to you, you may have lost friends, you may have, you know, deal with unsupportive family members. And so to go back on that creates this psychological turmoil within you um, to admit that you made a mistake. And in today's society, admitting that you made a mistake is very hard to do. I, you don't see a lot of people who, who can legit say, I messed up. I made a mistake and here's why. And I think this phenomenon is one of the reasons why we see nearly 100% of kids that get put on puberty blockers go on to HRT. We know that 80% of gender non-conforming kids will desist by the age of 16 if left alone. And I don't think doctors are that good at predicting that last 20% that really does have gender dysphoria. 
And this is kind of shown because we see the detransition rate going up exponentially. As well, look at the way that detransitioners are treated by trans activists. The pressure is to stay trans or you will become a target and a pariah by that community. Now I think boys wearing dresses or girls liking trucks is all good. Let them do their thing. Let them explore. You know, gender dysphoria is not about stereotypes, so stop using them to tell kids that they are trans. And being gender nonconforming should be okay and promoted over the medical intervention and social transitions that we are seeing today. I used to think that social transition was, you know, whatever, it doesn't harm anything, it allows kids to explore uh, without taking permanent medical steps. Now I'm seeing how psychologically it can lead to transition and then later on to detransition. Though I don't think that this should be illegal because it's not medical intervention, it's not permanent. I still think there are some kids that will benefit from this. And I would much prefer this over medical intervention until the child is of consenting age. But this should be a warning even to schools that it's not okay to keep a kid's social transition a secret from parents. The psychological impact of this could be greater than what they even expect. These children need mental health counseling, not complicit teachers. I mean, think of the psychological impact of a child, the anxiety of not knowing if their teacher or classmates will accidentally out them to their parents. At the same time, not being able to get the help from the professionals that they actually need. There's one case in Florida that shows how damaging that can be. The school hid the child's social transition from parents because of their Catholic faith. The child ended up attempting suicide twice, and the parents had no idea this child was suffering from depression and gender dysphoria or, you know, confused about their gender in this way. The school is now being sued as they should be, and thank God this child is now safe and getting the help that they need. But this is specifically why we are so passionate about this issue and why schools need to stop hiding stuff from parents. But with that, please go check out my article. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Click that like and subscribe button. Go support our sponsors. Follow me across all social media platforms, and I will see you next time.